G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Cybersecurity time, and this one I want to talk about WannaCry 2 or Petia or Petia or however you want to pronounce it. I want to talk about how I've seen the fallout of it, but also I want to, as an IT technician, I feel it's my duty of care to my viewers and subscribers to impart some generalized tips on how to protect yourself against it. Late Tuesday night, my time, I'd heard some rumblings um, around the tech world that a pretty nasty new ransomware virus had hit the, uh, hit the world. And it was confirmed to me in an email at uh, 25 past nine Wednesday morning, my time, that this new ransomware, WannaCry 2 or whatever you want to call it, had basically wiped out some pretty large multinational companies and companies here in Australia were starting to feel the heat from it. It had been spread by a what appears to be a fairly common accounting package, which I know nothing about, never heard of it until a couple of days ago, called Medoc. Uh, Cabri used it, Antonov used it, I believe this other multinational legal big legal firm also use it. And I got the article from my friend at his computer business. Now I'll put a link in the description below the video to this article and I would highly recommend you read it. Late Wednesday, my time, a vaccination, for want of a better term, had been discovered to protect yourself from this new virus. Now, a link to the vaccination is in the in the bottom of the article, so I really recommend you go and have a look at it. Our dear friends at um, Microsoft hit the panic button. But what got me intrigued was the level of hysteria coming out of sensationalised cybersecurity journalists, some governmental and departmental cybersecurity experts putting their hands in the air, hitting the panic button. Yes, it's, it, it is serious. Cybersecurity attacks now are getting very, very serious. And, you know, you, the fact that you can take out with cybersecurity a large X to the power of N number of people, businesses and countries it's getting catastrophic. And watching the fallout from it, the news stories and everything like this, it, it you'd almost think that um, some people don't know how to deal with it. I've been around helping businesses and people bolster their cyber security over the last few years. Here at home, I'm pretty much locked up. I've got Komodo antivirus, as you know, I'm a massive rap for them. Um, if you haven't had a look at Komodo antivirus, go and check out the video on it. I've got that set to update every two hours. My Endian firewall, the antivirus rules are being updated every six hours. The snort rules are being updated hourly. The firewall intrusion rules are being updated every, daily. Um, OpenBSD, I've done a sys patch on it uh, over the last couple of hours to see if there's anything out there in the way of security. So I'm pretty well locked up here. Now, whether you've just got a single PC, whether you're a systems manager for a business, for all the IT infrastructure, or like me, you're running a fairly complex network at home with multiple servers and multiple you know, machines and architectures and operating systems. The simplest fix to protect yourself. Now, I, I, I emphasize the simplest because sometimes the simplest fix doesn't always work. But the simplest way to protect yourself is make sure your virus definitions are always up to date with whatever antivirus you're using. If you're using an anti-malware service like Malwarebytes or anything, make sure that's up to date as well. If you're running any type of server operating system from Microsoft or Linux, make sure you've got the latest security updates and patches for that. 
Simple things like that can help you. But the other thing, and this is what I've noticed a lot with, um, without giving names away, relatives of mine. And this is something I hold true and have held for a long time now. A lot of the virus and are being spread through emails, and the problem is that they're getting very clever with the emails because the header, header and the signature and the stop end of the email are so authentic that a lot of systems just let it go through. But the one thing I've always learned, and I've always told people, if you don't know where the email's coming from or you don't know what the email's about or you've never seen the email before in your life, Delete it immediately. I know of companies here locally that employees have opened emails and written the business off. Brought it down to a crashing pile of water sitting on the ground. The whole their whole infrastructure has been liquefied for want of a better term. I say this to a number of people. If you don't know the email, you don't recognize the email, you're not expecting the email or anything like that, don't open it. Just bin it straight away. Some of the macros that are sitting in email header files and email signature files and that are so well written in some cases that some anti-malware systems and antiviruses don't detect it until it's too late. Now, as I said, here at home, and I know I'm probably over-cautious about it, I'm probably overheated or overheating about it as well, but I've got my modems firewall set to medium security, I've got Indian set pretty high, and then I'm behind OpenBSD. Now, admittedly, that might be a bit overcautious, but as I've said in the past, I've been taken down now over the last six or eight months about four or five times. Now, that's four or five times too many. And... In some cases, it's been my own stupid fault. I shouldn't have done it. I should have known better, but I didn't. The vaccination that, um, if I just scroll down here, um, much like WannaCry 1, you are greeted with the, uh, if you see this text, then your files are no longer accessible because they have been encrypted. Perhaps you are busy looking for a way to recover your files, but don't waste your time. Nobody can recover your files without a decryption service. What we're finding now is that even if you do pay the ransom, there's a 90% chance or no chance guarantee that your files will be decrypted. And even if they are, these hackers will still have control of your system. Now, the, as with WannaCry 1, they want you to send 300 bucks worth of Bitcoin to a, an address, send your Bitcoin wallet, ID and personal installation key to an email at uh, postdo.net, very similar to WannaCry 1. And um, if you've already purchased a key, please enter it below. Now, the problem is, is that there is no chance that your files will be decrypted. It looks exactly the same as WannaCry 1. Now, there is a patch from Microsoft out at the moment, which for Windows people, called MS17-010. Now, I, I've done it already, patched it. But also, I've done this other patch from WordFence. And as, as, as I said, I'm now pretty much uh, pretty much protected. Now, the list of companies affected uh, straight off the bat, I'll just read you out some of them. The Ukrainian State Power Company, Antonov, 
um, Mondelez Foods, which owns Cadbury Chocolate, TNT, uh, DLA, DLA Piper, the law, legal firm, was smashed to pieces. Heritage Valley Health System, which is a US hospital operator, has been smashed to pieces. Pharmaceutical company Merrick have got some of their systems have also been affected. There's a full list. Of course, there's piles of other lists, uh, and the list is just growing exponentially, almost on an hourly basis now. Semantics have said that Patea is very similar to WannaCry, which is probably why some people and technology people are calling it WannaCry 2. Um, there's plenty of uh, Twitter feed about it, which is where I first heard of rumblings about it, as I've said. I've got to be honest with you, this is serious. This is a no-joking-around type attack. And I guess that the easiest thing to say to everyone across whatever operating system you're running, whether you're a Windows-only user, whether you're a Linux user or a Unix user, um, any of them, make sure everything's up to date. Make sure you're fully protected. If you are running um, a modem, just a flat out normal DSL type modem, run your firewall on it at full throttle if you have to. Give up you know, your internet performance because the way I see it nowadays, I would rather forego my internet performance for my cyber security than risk my entire edifice being brought to the ground in a crashing pile of dust. Microsoft um, have said that you, you should keep always keep your um, Windows updates. Now, they've also said here in another article, which I don't know whether or not I'll put a link into this because I'm not sure how good this article is, Microsoft are releasing security updates for 2003R264, all server enterprises, 2012 standard, 2008R2 and X64, and 2012R2 data center. Viewers, be very wary of this because it is not really good. In fact, it's, it, if these attacks get progressively bigger and bigger and bigger, you could bring the world to its knees, which is not a good thing. In fact, it's a really, really bad thing. And a lot of this problem stems from, and people don't seem to realise this, that if you can get a Trojan or a ransomware into the cloud, any type of cloud, you can create chaos. Especially if the cloud provider systems are not locked down to a degree that's acceptable. I've been dealing with cyber security for a long time. As I said, I've been helping companies and individuals bolster their cyber security with advice. Initially, I was a big fan of Untangled, but now I'm, I'm a big fan for Indian Firewall. Protect yourselves out there. As I said, make sure every, you know, Linux. Always check your systems are up to date. Latest security patches, even for SE Linux, whether you're running server or desktop. Any Unix, including Mac OS, make sure you've got the latest updates for everything. Sys patch it if you have to. PKG add minus V, PKG add minus U. Because don't forget, the thing with this is it's, it's a kernel level attack. Now, I use kernel in the term loosely, whether that be Windows, Unix, or Linux. It's a kernel-level attack. And it, it's not good. Not good at all. 
Anyway, there you are. Cybersecurity, as I said, just protect yourself, viewers and subscribers, because I've got a couple of relatives who do a lot of online finance stuff. And the temptation to drop a computer there with Endian between their modem and their workstation is paramount. I am so tempted, except for the fact that I probably wouldn't. Um, I probably wouldn't be on the receiving end of much praise if I did it. If you get my drift, that should give you an idea of what my relatives think about cybersecurity. But there are a lot of people out there who are blasé about it. You know, it'll never happen to me. Then they get wiped out and like, but it was never going to happen to me. Well, it happened to you, didn't it? You've been warned. Anyway. Plenty more coming up on the channel today. Stick around. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, the Twitter feed, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.